Slots on the bottom are for the bullets to come out from the machine guns. And here we have the SR-71 Blackbird, designed by Kelly Johnson, Lockheed. Snow quartz. The other aircraft on this, the other side, the high wing aircraft, that's a British Lysander. Uh, that was an aircraft used for, I guess you could call it, black operations. They used that aircraft to land spies, pick up spies from France, mainly. Uh, that was used to fly into occupied German territory at the night. That's a very excellent short term. There's a very good book that you should read, and I'll put a recommendation. I'll make a video of a reading list. It's called Skunk Works. It's by Ben Rich, the number one man for Kelly Johnson who designed this airplane. And it goes into a lot of detail on all the engineering aspects of this airplane. Like the wheels, for example, you see are silver. And that's because the rubber is impregnated with aluminum because it would get so hot going those speeds. If you didn't do that and used regular rubber tires, they would expand and explode inside the wheel well. Same is true for the paint. They used a special red paint so that it wouldn't melt off the airplane because of the heat. Originally all the paint was white, but the Air Force said they wanted it in red because in their infinite wisdom, these white numbers at 70,000 feet would be too much of a giveaway. So they had to reformulate a whole new blend of paint just to make it red. Huge waste of money and stupid, but it was done. See here the cones, the inlet cones to the engine. These are adjustable, they can actually move in about two feet. And what they do is a, adjust the location of the shock layer of the supersonic flow. Embedded in here is an 
jet engine that's used for takeoff and landing. Once the airplane gets up to speed, there's a series of flaps which bypass the jet engine and then it becomes a ramjet. And if you don't know what a ramjet is, you can go look on Wikipedia. I'll put a link to that. Here are the exhaust nozzles. The jet engines were so big on this airplane that they couldn't start it with conventional uh, ground equipment, so they had to get a bunch of 500 horsepower Chevrolet engines and run them at full throttle to spool up the big engines on this airplane. We know it as the Blackbird, however the drivers of the airplane know it as the Shabu. Of course there's an all-moving rudder surface. Landing gear. Some versions of this had a hypersonic drone that would go on the top and detach. They tried flying that over China. All the material on this airplane was titanium. It was only material that was strong enough to withstand the heat. Very, very expensive. At one point they uh, developed, I believe it was the AMRAAM missile, they use it on the bottom of the F-14s, it was designed for the F or the SR-71, it actually went in there, two doors came down and the missile was contained inside the airplane, but it wasn't very successful and they ended up putting it on other fighters, but it was originally supposed to weaponize this airplane. And this airplane was designed to expand at the temperatures of Mach 3 because you know from physics materials expand when they get hot. So when this airplane was on the ground all these titanium panels were contracted and it would leak fuel like crazy so they'd usually have a fire truck following it on taxi and takeoff. But of course, once it got in the air, the airplane heated up, all the seals expanded, and it became tight. So one of the things they would do is take off and immediately find a special fleet of tankers, which had special fuel dedicated just for this airplane. They would join up and refuel. So you can imagine flying this as a very expensive airplane due to all the specialized support equipment that was needed. Again, you gotta go read the book Skunk Works.
Here is the Loon Missile. Pulse Jet Missile. Here's the Messerschmitt. 163. I sure probably turned it off. The uh, rocket engine that would propel it.